Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I'll be sharing what I've learned about Rebecca Lee Crumpler, born on February 8, 1831, died on March 9, 1895, notable physician, nationality, American. Rebecca Davis was born free in Christiana, Delaware to Matilda Weber and Absalom Davis. Sources do not specify the reason, but Davis was raised in Pennsylvania by her aunt rather than her parents. Davis's aunt was a kind woman who helped care for sick neighbors. Witnessing this example of informal but compassionate care had a profound impact on Davis. It inspired her to also aspire to help others find relief for their suffering. At the time, many women and black people obtained little if any education, yet Davis was enrolled in prestigious private schools. During her childhood, Davis was deemed a special student and attended the Western Union English School and Classical Schools in Massachusetts. After completing her education, Davis relocated to Charlestown in 1852 where she began work as a nurse. That year was also significant due to Davis's marriage to Wyatt Lee. Over the next eight years, Davis provided care for patients and supported local doctors. In 1860, she applied to medical school with support from her doctor colleagues. Davis's acceptance to the New England Female Medical College, NEFMC, was a major accomplishment. At the time of her admission, there were 54,000 doctors in America. Only about 300 were women, and all of those women were white. There were about 180 black physicians and all were men. Most medical schools did not accept black students and few accepted female students. Black people in the North still experienced discrimination and limitations, and many male physicians believed women were too delicate to practice medicine. There were several obstacles in the path of Davis attending medical school, but they worked themselves out. NEFMC was initially reluctant to allow Davis to attend, but capitulated. Benjamin Wade, an Ohio abolitionist, had previously created a fund through which Davis won a scholarship that covered her tuition. After two years in medical school, Davis took a leave of absence to care for her husband, who unfortunately died of tuberculosis in April 1863. When Davis attempted to resume her studies, some of the faculty were resistant to her returning. They felt the amount of time it was taken for her to complete her studies was disconcerting. Fortunately, some of the school's patrons intervened on Davis's behalf and she was readmitted. Upon completion of her studies and receiving her doctorate of medicine on March 1, 1864, Davis became America's first black woman to earn an MD. Davis spent some time practicing medicine in Boston, where she focused on the care of women, children, and poor people. Following the end of the Civil War, Davis moved to Virginia, where she worked with the Freedmen's Bureau to provide medical care for the newly free. In 1865, Davis married Arthur Crumpler, and using both married names became Rebecca Lee Crumpler. While Crumpler had been born free, both of her husbands had been enslaved. She was motivated to move to Virginia in part because she viewed working with the formerly enslaved as missionary work. Many formerly enslaved people lacked access to important resources, which included medical care. While in the South, Crumpler, like other black doctors and black people in general, had to contend with the overwhelming task of helping the freedmen while navigating the openly hostile racism of the post-war years. Throughout her career in both the North and South, Crumpler would struggle with racism. She was unable to obtain admitting privileges at hospitals, pharmacists would decline to fill her prescriptions, and she faced discrimination from other health care professionals. At the end of the decade, the Crumplers returned to Boston and settled in Beacon Hill, North Slope, which was primarily black at the time. Their home at 67 Joy Street doubled as the location of Crumpler's medical practice. She once again focused on providing medical care for women and children, even those who might be unable to pay. Crumpler's marriage produced one daughter, Lizzie Sinclair Crumpler, but she likely passed away in infancy or childhood. In 1880, the Crumplers moved to Boston's Hyde Park neighborhood. Three years later, Crumpler published a book of medical discourses. The book was a health care guide that was geared towards her primary patients, mothers caring for themselves and their children. Crumpler's book was likely the first, but certainly among the first medical guides to be written by a black author. It's unclear when exactly Crumpler stopped practicing medicine, but it was likely sometime around their relocation. On March 9, 1895, Rebecca Lee Crumpler died of fibroid tumors at the age of 64. She was survived by her husband, who later died in 1910. For many years, Crumpler's legacy of achievement was lost to history. She and later her husband had been buried in Hyde Park's Fairview Cemetery without headstones. It's likely that during her life, Crumpler was unaware of her status as the first black woman MD. This fact was overlooked for years due to Rebecca Cole being mistakenly considered the first when she completed her degree three years after Crumpler. 
No photos of Crumpler are known to exist, but Google, as well as books and articles, feature images of a woman identified as Crumpler. The woman in the photo is actually the first black licensed nurse in America, Mary Eliza Mahoney. 104 years after Crumpler's death, Sandra Moss Robinson, M.D., and Patricia Whitley, M.D., founded the Rebecca Lee Society. The organization celebrated Crumpler's achievement and aimed to support black women doctors. In 2019, Vicki Gall, a Boston history buff and supporter of the Hyde Park Library, launched a fundraiser that obtained headstones for the Crumplers. Rebecca Lee Crumpler's house at 67 Joy Street, where she lived and practiced for years, received a historical plaque and became a stop on Boston's Women's Heritage. Trail. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes and sources are available on the Noir Histoire website via the link in the episode description. I'm working on creating downloadables and infographics, so keep an eye on the website. These Black History Facts are released every Wednesday, so if you enjoyed this episode and want more, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my Black History Facts playlist.